in this video we will talk about the idea of chain codes so chain codes are basically used for representing a boundary or it is used for boundary representation in order to represent a boundary using chain codes we must have the boundary as a sequence of straight line segments of a specific length and direction okay so if you have a boundary formed by the straight line segments of a specific length and direction then you can use chain codes to represent that boundary okay so there are two types of chain codes the first one is a four directional chain code and the second one is a eight directional chain code depending on how the connectivity is defined on the boundary we'll be choosing the appropriate type i have shown a figure here so in this boundary you can define this entire boundary using for connectivity scheme so in that situation a four directional chain code will be enough but in the second figure you can see that we have a direct connectivity so we will have to use a a directional connectivity in order to make the representation possible we have to define certain directional codes so if a boundary is formed by a four directional connectivity we can use the four directional chain code for that okay so the directional numbers of a four directional chain code is defined in this way so if you have a straight line segment that is moving to the right side you have to use zero to represent that straight line segment and if the direction of the straight line segment is upwards then we will be using number one to represent that segment then if it is to the left side then i will be using number two if i have a straight line segment that is going down then i will be using number three to represent that straight line segment similarly the same kind of representation applies for a a directional chain code also now we will look at how the chain codes can be created using these directional numbers to begin with we have to choose an initial point to start the coding from so by convention we will be choosing the top leftmost point so here this is the top leftmost point then you traverse in the clockwise direction okay clockwise direction now you take the first straight line segment from the starting point so I have a straight line segment that is going to the right side so I will be coding that segment with a number 0 okay the next segment is going down so I am writing the number 3 for that straight line segment because any downward direction has to be marked with number 3 the next segment is going right so I will be again writing 0 next one is downward so I will be writing 3 next we have a segment that is going to the left side so that has to be coded with number two again i have a straight line segment going to the left so again number two then i have a segment going up so i'll be coding it with number one then again a segment that is going up i'll be numbering it with number one in order to write the chain code for this boundary you have to start from the starting point so the first code is zero then you have three again zero again three then 2 2 then 1 1 okay so this is the chain code for this particular boundary so this chain codes are also called freeman chain code okay. now if you consider the second diagram we have a diagonal direction so we have to come up with a directional number for that segment also so we'll be using this convention if you have a segment that is going diagonally up to the right side we'll be coding it with the number one if you have a segment that is going up then we will be coding that with number two if you have a segment that is going diagonally up through the left side then you have to code it with number three and so on so we have to keep these two conventions in mind now we will code this particular boundary so we'll be starting from this point so the first number is the number corresponding to this segment so if you look at this image this direction is represented by using number seven so the first number will be number seven then you have a segment that is going to the right side so that has to be coded with number zero then one coming down so that has to be coded with number six then we have two different lines going to the left side so that has to be coded with number four then you have two segments that is going up so that has to be coded with number two okay so this is the freeman chain code for the second boundary so this is number seven 
this is 0, this is 6, this is 4, 4, then 2 and 2. Okay, so this is how we form the Freeman chain code. So finally you can come up with a chain code that is represented in this image and if you start writing the chain code from this point it will be 0, 7, 6, Now suppose that I have a boundary as shown in figure. And now imagine that I am using the four directional chain code. So we will have the directional numbers in this way. So this is 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now if I assign the directional code using this representation, if I start from this point I will have 0, 0, 3, 2, 2 and 1. Okay, so the first chain code I have is 0, 0, 3, 2, 2, 1. Now what will happen if I change my starting point to this point? So the number will be 3, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0. Okay, now what will happen if I have a starting point at this point? So that will be 1, 0, 0, 3, 2, 2. So we have a problem here that is depending on the starting location of the chain code, the code itself is varying. So we have different Freeman chain codes for representing the same boundary. Okay. So we have to resolve this problem. In order to resolve that, we have to normalize it with respect to the starting point. Okay. Okay. In order to normalize these chain codes with respect to the starting point, we have to treat this chain code as a circular sequence. If you want to find the number after 1, then that number will be the number in the beginning. So you have to just assume that we have written this number over the circumference of a circle. We have to do one more thing that is we have to redefine the starting point such that the resulting integer has a lowest magnitude. So for example, if you treat this number as an integer, this is actually 3000. 221 and if you treat this as an integer so this number will be 322,100 okay so this will be 100,322 okay so whichever number gives a smaller magnitude we have to take that number as the chain code so in these three options we will have to choose this one because this has the lowest magnitude if you want to get a simple example suppose that I have a number 210 and if I rearrange this number one option will be uh, 0 21 and another option will be uh, 102 okay so these are different options that I can come up with by changing the starting point assuming that these numbers are behaving circularly this is 210 this is 21 and this is 102 so out of this I need to select this number because this is the number 21 and which has the lowest magnitude among these three numbers okay so in order to normalize with respect to starting point we have to re so in order to normalize it with respect to starting point I have to select the starting point such that the resulting chain code gives the lowest magnitude okay so among these three I will be selecting this one now as a result of normalization with respect to starting point imagine that I have a boundary of this kind okay now if I choose to start from this point then the chain code will be 0 then 3 then 2 then 1 okay so I'm writing the chain code that is 0 3 2 1 and if I assume this number as a circular sequence and if I want to get the smallest magnitude number from this one then it will be the same number that is 0 3 2 1 and if someone decide to start from this point then the corresponding chain code will be 1 0 3 2 then we will have to rearrange this number such that we should get the smallest magnitude number so in order to normalize this number you have to come up with the smallest magnitude number so it will be by taking the number 0 in the beginning 
so we'll get 0 3 2 1 so those two numbers are again the same and if someone decide to start from this point then the number will be 2 1 0 3 and if you normalize this number again then you have to bring this 0 to the beginning then only we will get the smallest magnitude so the resulting number will be 0 3 2 1 so it doesn't matter where you start once you normalize with respect to the starting point the chain code will not differ it will be the same now we have to tackle one more issue in the chain code imagine that I have two different boundaries over here when you look at the first image and the second image the second image is the rotator version of the first image if you try to find the chain codes of these two boundaries using the directional codes like this one then it will be as follows here I am taking this as the starting point then the first code will be 0 then again 0 then we have the next code as uh, 3 then 2 again 2 then we have the last number as 1 so the chain code is 0 0 3 2 2 1 okay now we don't want to normalize it because it has the smallest magnitude itself now if you look at the second one if I take this one as the starting point then the first code will be 0 then I have 3 again 3 then 2 then 1 and again 1 okay so the chain code will be 0 3 3 2 1 1 okay so when you look at these two codes these two codes are completely different even if I consider it is a circular sequence it will not be the same sequence at all when you look at the boundaries one is the rotator version of the other one if you show a boundary of this kind to the computer first it will calculate its chain code as follows and if you rotate the image and again show that boundary to the computer then this will be the chain code the computer will determine that these two images are completely different but actually they are the same but the difference is one is a rotator version of the other one then how can we tackle this issue that is even though one image is a rotated version of the other one I need to get the same code for both the boundaries okay so for this purpose we have to normalize the chain code for rotation in order to normalize the chain code for rotation rather than writing the chain code as itself we will write the first difference code of the chain code the first difference of the chain code is obtained by writing the number of direction changes that separates two adjacent codes in the first chain code. So this is my chain code by the first difference code. Okay. So here you have the direction 1. As we are treating the chain code as a circular sequence, in order to get the first element of the difference code, we have to count the number of direction changes it takes from 1 to 0 if you are moving this directions and the clockwise direction okay so we are moving in the counterclockwise direction starting from direction 1 we will be counting the number of directional changes it takes to reach the direction 0 so there is one direction change when it comes from 1 to 2 and another for 2 to 3 and another for 3 to 0 okay so the first element of our difference code will be 3 because we have taken three different direction changes to reach from 0 to 0 I do not need any direction changes so the number of direction changes 0 so that comes as the second element of my difference code then from 0 to 3 then this is 0 then to reach 3 I need to take 1 2 3 3 direction changes so the next element of my difference code is 3 then from 3 to 2 if you count it then I have 
this is 3 to reach 2 I need to take 1 2 3 so again 3 okay then from 2 to 2 I do not need any direction change so it is 0 from 2 to 1 if you count that will be also 3 so this is the first difference code of the given chain code now if you look at the second image this is my chain code and if you want to find the difference code we have to take the direction changes from this one back to this zero so the first number will be this one so the first number will be one two three so it is three from zero to three again i need three different changes so the next element will be three and from three to three i need zero changes from three to zero i need three changes from two to one i need three changes and from 1 to 1 also I do not need any changes okay so this is the difference code for the second boundary and if you are treating this code as a circular sequence then you can see that both the codes are the same and if you try to find the minimum magnitude integer combination from these two numbers the number will be obtained by taking the maximum number of 0 to the beginning then I will write the other numbers assuming that this number is in the circular order so first I will write 0 then 3 3 0 3 and the last number will be again 3 in the second code also I will write the maximum number of zeros in the beginning so I will start from here 0 3 3 again 0 3 3 so if you look at these two numbers those two numbers are the same so the minimum magnitude difference code is called the shape number of that boundary okay so the shape number is nothing but it is the minimum magnitude integer obtained from the first difference code so we have discussed method to normalize the chain code with respect to a starting point as well as with respect to rotation so after doing this one the shape number will be rotation invariant as well as the starting point invariant okay i hope the idea is clear thank you